I would give thanks for this chemo Mm -hmm. and I would take authority over it and I would say, you are only allowed to help me, not harm me. Paul was bit by a viper and didn't even face him. So why are we scared of chemotherapy? You were invited here tonight because you have a fire that needs fathering. Wow. He said, you you need the heart of the Lord with the word of the Lord. Wow. He said, you're cut from a different cloth. You will never fit in. And he paused and says something. You need to go find Damon Thompson. Wow. <laughs> wow. And, and I had never heard that name in my life. <laughs> wow. wow. Just like that. One, two, three, into the four. Yes, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. <laughs> They're at the door. Give me the microphone first so I can bust like a bubble. <laughs> <laughs> Conway All right. and Mobile together. Now you know we. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Hello, friends. You've joined us for another wonderful episode of Pure Conversations. And I'm Braden. And I'm not alone this time. I'm joined by my beautiful wife, Miss <laughs> Frankie. Hey, babe, how you doing? I'm good. Ooh, your voice changed. <laughs> it went a little lower. How low can you go? Hey. Okay, I'm going to leave it alone. I'm sorry. I'm this sorry. It's a family show. <laughs> family yeah. I'm sorry. Hey, that's I'm how sorry. the family got started. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay, but no, no. You good? You feeling good? I'm feeling good. Babe, how are you feeling about this conversation. That little girl on the emoji. (laughs) (laughs) That's where I am at right now. Over, over excited. I've been anticipating this all day. Very, very excited. How you feeling? Yeah, you about to cry. You want a tissue? I'm about to cry already. (laughs) Y'all just don't know. I'm really, I really am about to cry. Listen, we have a beautiful couple. Here that um, has a beautiful family. Yes. Um, but they have lived through some things, and um, and they're here to share some of their journey with us. Mm. We have Luke and Melissa Richardson. Listen. Ha <laughs> ah, ah. ha! Luke and Melissa Richardson. Yeah. They're here. And we're here. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Yes. Special. We thank you all so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Man. We ain't even talked about nothing yet. I feel tears all on my face right now. Yep. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I'm so thankful for you all just being open to come. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So this is how it started. I told my wife mm-hmm. multiple times mm-hmm. that I wanted to interview you all. Mm-hmm. Yes. Multiple times. Yes. Before we even before we even interviewed Elijah and Judah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I told her. Yeah. And not just because of your wife's story. But both of your stories, mm. yes. because I think it's so impactful when they, when you know men, husbands or wives hear your side mm-hmm. of things. I think it's gonna bless people. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I just wanna, I wanna sit with them. I just wanna hear with their hearts and let them, you know, just share. Yeah. And I hit, I had, I, I was in, I was in the room one one day, and I, you know how you just feel like the Lord is pulling at you and calling you, saying, "Come here." Mm-hmm. And I was, I was like, okay, I was trying to do some, I was actually trying to do some edits, but I could feel him messing with me. So I was like, okay, okay, Lord. So I just, I just began to get in prayer and I, and I began to hear your wife's name. Your wife's name began to come to me. And I was like, I'm like, God, I don't want to mess with these people. I don't want to mess with these folk. I don't, uh. but it was in my heart. I really wanted to interview you all. Yeah. Um, and so I reached out to you. I asked my wife about it. I'm like, babe, you think I should, you, you know, you know how you start a text message and then start <laughs> over and delete it and it don't sound right. You're like, oh, God. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you all were so kind. From the very first, from the very first text message, man, from the very first one, you all were so kind to us. Yes. And thank you all for being here. How y'all doing today? How y'all doing? Doing good. Thank you for having us. Like, we are very humbled and thankful. Anytime I get to... Make a big deal about Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm about it. Yes, so ma'am. thank you for the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, very uh, just feels right. Very special. Mm-hmm. And like I said, uh, just everything that even the in the preparation and the way that you guys have taken the time to, you know, kind of give us the heads up and make us feel comfortable. The the yeah. questions that you sent over, like I said, I literally got teary eyed 
just mm-hmm. reading through the questions because it was so obvious that it was yeah. thoughtful. Mm-hmm. Yes. And there had been some time put into that. So we're, we're just happy to be here. Yes. Excited. Yes, sir. Um, we have mm-hmm. some special people in our lives that are going through similar walks as you. And we just feel like this needs to get out. Mm-hmm. We were impacted. I mean, I've been experiencing encounters and healing in my body just by you getting up in service and telling your testimony. Wow. Mm-hmm. And it's just... It's powerful. <laughs> we just we we feel like we can't get everybody to move here, but mm-hmm. we can send this out. Mm-hmm. Wow, yes. that's this is it's just mm-hmm. impactful. Mm-hmm. It is Lord. so impactful. Hmm. Um, wow. So my first encounter, I guess, uh, there were first encounters. Um, the initial one was actually a video, but we'll talk about more in depth. But we came down for July twenty twenty three for the Under the Oaks. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. We came down for Under the Yolks, and while we were staying with this wonderful couple, we saw this video of you all, <laughs> and it was hot outside, too. <laughs> but you all were talking and sharing about what was going on, um, and we'll talk about that a little bit more. Um, but that was one part of it. But then I think the other part was uh, uh, your son's birthday. Mm-hmm. Now, I didn't come to it, but my children told me, they said, Daddy, we was invited to rip to a high schooler's birthday. <laughs> like, man, you ain't invited nobody birthday. Get out of here. <laughs> yeah. like, we just moved here. We don't know anybody. You don't, you Who invited nobody? You? you ain't even in high school. What you doing over in the room? What's, what's... But you know, they told me that he 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 really did invite us. Yeah. I'm like, man, son. But and he really did invite them. Yep. And I was like, yeah. I was blown away by the kindness of you know your son to just you know invite him, invite them. Mm-hmm. Um, because Michael is isn't isn't even the same grade as as Josh. So for him to think about. Right. them you know that just blew me away so i was you know i'm so grateful for the kindness you know you all are kind but even your children are kind oh, and we thank you all so much thank yeah. you definitely a reflection yeah so thank, thank you. you all so much that's thank really cool so much. really really cool um so we, we we a little bit before we started you all you know talked about how long you all have been married you you all are married for have been married for 19 years this may this may yeah. well, before we talk about that part where are, where are you from? Where did, where did you meet? Where are you from? Are, are you from Louisiana? Yeah, I'm from North Louisiana. So the real Louisiana folks don't really claim us. We're kind of <laughs> North Yankees, you know. It's like that? Yeah, we're like, <laughs> dog, call no. it the Arklatex, Northwest Louisiana, Shreveport, oh. Bossier City, I-20, run straight through it on to Dallas. Okay. Yeah. Okay. He said Arklatex. It's, yeah. it's like right where Arkansas, yes, Louisiana, yes, Texas. There's yeah. actually a, a city in, I think it's in Arkansas, called Texarkana. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, we, would, we would go through right. Texarkana just to go, you know, from Waco to Arkansas. Yeah. Um, from yeah. Waco to Cumberland. Right. You guys wow. know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Y'all from yes. Arkansas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. a lot of time it's here. Right. Yeah. 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 yeah so that's wow. our, that's where we're both from that area. I'm yes. from Bossier City. Okay. Mm-hmm. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, are you all high school sweethearts? Is that, is it, is it, was it a high school thing or was no. it? college or you go ahead so tell you, us what, what, what's the story so do you does anybody okay for anybody that's got saved by the bell oh history <laughs> on the lock yes so this is melissa had a group of high school friends uh-huh and later in life after her and i had become married i became good friends with one of the guys that was in her high school friend group okay. and he sat with me one day and he goes dude when you and melissa first started talking uh-huh. you were jeff from the max <laughs> because melissa was kelly she wow. was dating uh, zach morris oh, and man. i was jeff from the max <laughs> i was the older college guy that swooped uh, in and broke up uh, the power oh, couple you were jeff i was jeff from the max <laughs> you know man. yeah so we were not high school sweethearts no oh wow. man you were jeff yeah I mean, now it is registering me <laughs> Because I, I grew up watching Saved by the Bell. Oh, Zach two the episodes man. on WGN, you, flip over to TBS and right. catch them too. Our kids I even mean, know Saved by the Bell because we still watch yeah. it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> it's all there, man. It is. Man, that's wonderful. Yeah. Man. Yeah. So I got a history that we ain't got to get all into, but I ain't always walked with Jesus. Uh, yes, sir. But I'm talking like it was bad. Yes, I was into interstate drug trafficking, should have been in jail, should have been wow. dead. Wow. But after I kind of got wore out and was tired of it and yes, wasn't sir. really as active in that anymore. I just kind of came back to my hometown when working menial jobs and mm-hmm. had, had kind of decided to go back to college. Yes, sir. And, and one of my buddies who I kind of 
ran with, I guess at that time was Melissa's stepbrother. Okay. And her and I met, um, through him. Wow. And, and she was this just amazing, deep relationship with Jesus since she was three years old and I was not. So mm-hmm. we just collided and began this wow. crazy journey that's still sharpening me to this day. Uh-huh. And, Man, that's amazing. That's mm-hmm. amazing. That's amazing. Um, wow. who, who made the first move? This is the mo- this is the topic of debate. I wasn't- oh, it was you. There's no debate. I'm not a sh- I would gladly why wouldn't I make the first move? But there is some t- there is a topic of debate. No, you tell him. Why tell the story. Okay. Version? I've been talking So he game. was hanging out with my stepbrother. Okay. Um he had spent the night at our house and I- he had to go to work the next morning and mm-hmm. so he's like I needed an alarm to be able to get up, and I let him use my phone. Well, whenever I got up that day, I walked downstairs, and he had left a note that was like, thanks for the alarm. It would be cool to hear from you. I think that's the first move, okay? (laughs) Well, being the Southern Belle that I was raised to be, Uh I ain't calling no boy. Like, no. (laughs) So, but, But I did want to hang out with him, so I was like, hey, Josh, which is my stepbrother. Uh Uh-huh. I was like, hey, why don't you call and see what Luke's up to tonight? You know, uh-huh. and so he took that as the first move. And I'm like, dude, that is not the first move. I, yeah, but I'll gladly just come into full agreement with my my request for an alarm was the first move. So we had set up and talked all night that night, mm-hmm. went to sleep early morning hours and asked for her alarm. And we've been pretty much together ever since. Yeah. Wow. That was a no two. Yeah. So. In 2002. Mm-hmm. Man, that's amazing, man. That is. Jeff. Jeff. Oh, Jeff. Jeff and Kelly. Jeff from the Max. Jeff. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. took that man and mommy, babe. Yep. Yeah. She had a little crush for her. Ooh! Yeah. Hey, he, Zach yeah. lost. Zach, he yeah. lost. Zach he, found his girl somewhere <laughs> later down the yeah. line, you know? She wasn't in the cast. <laughs> yes, we don't know. Yes, yes, Man. Um, and she's beautiful. And she's beautiful. Man, yeah. this, um, you all have four children. Yes. Four children. Um. Can can we can we talk about so we have I found out it's actually Elijah. Yeah. Yes. But you know, known as Richie. Richie. He's Richie around here and yeah. Yeah. Okay. And your your daughter's name it is Hallie. Mm-hmm. Am I saying it correctly? Mm-hmm. Um now the younger two, I'm not familiar with them. Okay. I'm not familiar. Can you can you, can we talk? Can you give Sure. Me? Um so there's Hallie, that's short for Hallelujah. And then um, Ezra, and then Titus. So wow. Ezra is he the one that everybody calls Ezzy D? Ezzy D. I, I, now I hear that his name Ezzy. is Ezra Daniel. So okay, he's been Ezzy D Ezzy since D. he was. I love that. Yeah, a, you know talk the nickname. That nickname stay. And, yes. really, and he's that kid. He's the okay. kid that for his third birthday he didn't want toys. Mm-hmm. He wanted suspenders and a bow tie. <laughs> you know, I mean, he's been like, he's yeah. been just about that thing you know uh-huh. since he yeah. was uh-huh. early fresh uh-huh man so, that's wonderful as he did suspenders in, in a bow tie yep mm-hmm. some skinny jeans yes sir some suspenders in a bow tie that's what he's he wanted. that man yep. i love it i love it mm-hmm. man that's wonderful and then that's titus wonderful, call man. him t tizzle tizzle yeah. i like that <laughs> since we're talking about your children when you when you think about your children and all that you all have endured and went through and what, what are your thoughts about them what are your thoughts concerning your children? Um, I feel like it walking through this has like um, deepened my appreciation for just the day to day and the little things, you know. And then I, f- I feel like you know, growing up, my dream was just to be a mom. Like I really just wanted to be a mom. I wanted to experience that. Um. And then I found, so I love my mother very much, but um, she had a very difficult life. And so I missed out on a lot because of just her working through things. Um, And so I never really got to experience that relationship. Golly, I'm going to cry now. Um, um, So thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Um, so I 
the Lord just knew that. And so I, I can honestly say, though, like I have lived in just great appreciation for every moment of, of having them and squeezed out every drop of joy. Um, but I feel like because of the way that I, you know, didn't have a relationship with my mom, I carried a lot of pressure of like perfection. I wanted to be the perfect mom. And, you know, and so it's like having that perspective and not even realizing it until you walk through something like this. And it's like, all you want to do as a mom is like make their life so happy and not, you don't want them to feel any pain. You don't want them. And then you're in this situation to where you can't control that. I can't protect you from this. There's nothing I can do to keep you from feeling this pain. And um, that honestly is probably was the most challenging part for me personally of walking through it. But I can say that the Lord walking me through that has healed me from that perfectionism and healed me. And like, I realize I'm not their protector. And it really freed me to be able to love them without the pressure of trying to be the perfect mom, you know, to just um, that he's their protector and he's the one who will hold their little hearts. And, and, you know, honestly, I, I looking back, I'm like, I'm so thankful because they have grown and, you know, this has not just been my journey and it's not been just his, it's been theirs too. And it's part of their story. And I can see how the Lord has walked them through this just as closely and how I can look at my son, Elijah, and just marvel at the just like crazy, thus saith the Lord, this is the word of the Lord and unwavering faith. And I can look at my daughter and just the listening to the stories of her encounters through this and our sweet little boys and, and all of them gathering around me and praying over me every night. And the Lord just really showed me like, Melissa, this is not just for you. Like they're going to carry this and look back at this process that they walked through and um, they'll tell their children, mm -hmm. "Yes, ma'am." This is how the Lord healed my mama. Mm -hmm. This is this is who He is, right. you know. Right. But had I tried to protect them, mm -hmm. had I tried, you know, I would be robbing them from that, you know. Mm -hmm. So yes, it really, I mean, I guess honestly, I look at them and I marvel mm -hmm. at um, just the beauty that's come out of them through this process. Yes, and I've learned in that that pain, like, it, that's not my job as their mom is to protect them from pain. But it's my job to be with them because that's what the Father does for us. That's so good. You know? That's so yes, ma'am. Oh. Does that answer your question? Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay. Luke, did you did you want to chime in? I on? mean, man, it's just, just being it's in that with them, you know? I mean... I think the only thing I could add to that is how, you know, over the years, uh, I parented out of a lot of fear mm -hmm. and yeah. control. Just, uh, you know, with my personal past, I would like, man, if I would see any, if I would see anything in their behavior that even was yeah. anywhere close to, could be like an yes, infantile sir. stage of something mm -hmm. that I'd experienced pain in, I would, yes, I didn't identify it as this is fear and control i would parent in like a very volatile like no mm -hmm. kind of quick way and then yes, through just you know holy spirit and and holy spirit and my wife it, it, it became something it became apparent to me that that was in me yes, sir. 2018 2019 yes, sir. and then through 2020 21 22 23 um what i have i feel like i have inherited mm -hmm. is an understanding that that has no place. Yes. Yeah. And, um, and as I have been boiled in perfect love, mm -hmm. it has changed <laughs> how I see my children and how I see what my role as their father is. Yes, sir. You know, yes, and sir. that has completely transformed what the culture of our home 
Yes, sir. And how we communicate. Yes, sir. And how I parent and like to the to to Mel's point, like, um, you know, there's just a lot more. The I think the pace of heaven mm. is is come into our home regarding everything. But wow. you know, if we're talking about kids, wow. there's not there's not this overarching theme of like trying to nip every little thing in the bud. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Just letting yes, things kind of marinate and letting yes, things sir. grow and letting them walk things out and letting mm-hmm. them feel. Yes, sir. Um, but all of that being, I just feel like fear got exposed mm-hmm. in these last few years. Yes, sir. To to a degree where it was maybe able to kind of hide in some areas where you wouldn't really put your finger on that and call that fear. Right. And and um, it's impacted our, the way we interact with our kids and each other and the world around us for that fact, you know. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. just, yeah. Wow. Wow. <clears throat> it's it's interesting. Um, um, I've heard Pop say, and he's as he he says he's getting ready for it. It's coming. He's, I think it's coming up week. Uh, the the mm-hmm. uh, um, um, he said he he said it like three four times. So it's must it's really in his heart. He was saying how that it's so much easier to be uh, militant. Mm-hmm. Uh, Especially for me, he says it's more easier to be militant than it is to be um, uh, sensitive. Sensitive, yeah. 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 Tender. tender. Or tender. Because <coughs> one, yeah. one requires yeah. it because it requires sensitivity. Right. He's, something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, don't don't quote me on that. But he, sa- he, he said it's something around there. It's like, right. man, like, when I, when I heard that, I was like, oh, <coughs> man, Pops. Because my, my way and how I, and even how I, how I was raised was different you know it was mm-hmm. tough it was strong but then when you yeah. when you hear that and then it's like lord and then but then and, and then also how i'm living and being here it's a it, it impacts you so it's like man you want to yeah. let's, let's do something different mm-hmm. let's let's not yeah. do it like it's been done or like we've seen it done so right. man i think you all are amazing i think it's amazing yeah, your children are amazing i think it's amazing um <laughs> i'm gonna keep moving i'm gonna keep pushing um now I'm gonna ask you this. You don't have to answer. When we initially were going to um, meet to do our to do this, it was the 14th yeah. of, of of March, and you 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 told me that day was super significant for you all. Now, mm-hmm. is that can you talk about that? You don't have to. You don't have to. You can say no. We ain't that. We can't talk about that. I don't. I'm not, I'm an open book. I just don't want to derail our time together with something that's that's a long a long winded story. But I can speak to to it, um, and you feel free to. We're just we just Holy Spirit's going to flow. If y'all are cool with yes, that, no, no. we're just going to let it go how that how it goes. But I'll uh, I'll start and we'll see where it goes. But I didn't know that the date was significant to us until 2022. Mm-hmm. But in 2021. I had a series of dreams, and I dream sporadically. Yes, sir. I may not dream for six months, but when I do dream three, four days in a row, they're Same usually way. very yeah. impactful, yes, vivid, mm-hmm. journal worthy. Yeah. Yes, sir. And um, so I had a series of dreams where the number three, one, four kept coming up in my dreams, and I honored the number. Mm-hmm. I prayed into it. I've got a journal full of cool things, wow. personal revelation that. That uh, and it's meant a lot to me, and yes, um, I ended up actually getting a tattoo. Yes, it's sir. on my arm, mm-hmm. and like I said, there's that's a whole another podcast or show that we could talk about what that number <laughs> means to me personally. Yes, sir. But on this specific day, on March the fourteenth, two thousand and twenty-two, mm-hmm. Melissa and I were living in South Carolina at that time. <clears throat> Had been there for four years, and. And there was a, a moment in our marriage in 2009 where I was unfaithful. I call it the the great apex of kind of this crescendo where like that could have been the turning point towards yes, everything falling apart and our family could have been destroyed. But what happened was um, the Lord spoke to me audibly as clearly as I've ever heard the Lord speak to me. Yes, sir. And, I, and I pulled over on the side of the road, and he made it very clear to me. He said, son, I have a plan for your life, and you've it's time for you to be honest with yourself. Be honest with me mm-hmm. and go home and tell Melissa everything that happened. So I drove home, looked her in the face, told her everything that happened. I'm not going to speak for you as far as your experience that day, but from that point forward, there's been this 
what could have been the end was the beginning. You know? And my God. And, um, my, I, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I thought it was a, you know, I had no clue what that meant. Yeah. It's okay. So it's okay. Um, but sitting but there it's in, so powerful. Sitting there in 2022, we had no idea that that was the date that any of that happened. We just we just knew about what time of year that yeah. happened. <clears throat> so on 314, <clears throat> excuse me, 22, we're talking about it. We would revisit it throughout our history and yeah. talk about just all that the Lord has done and okay. just being, you know, things happen in life and we kind of draw back. You know how you yeah. just work through things yeah. as a, as a, as in, in a marriage, but she ended up cuz my cuz she was out of town because she was with my mom supporting a friend whose son had actually passed away in a vehicle accident, motor vehicle mm-hmm. accident. So she went, she was able to go back and just through looking at the newspaper clippings from that was able to tell like, wow. babe, it was March 14th, 314, mm-hmm. 2009 that that happened. And it was 316, 2009 that I mm-hmm. came in and told her mm-hmm. um, and shifted everything. Well, then that year, 2022, we make this discovery that 314 is the day that happened. Mm-hmm. 315, I believe, is is was a pretty significant day for us. And then 316 is when we kind of were brought in and told about the mobile move and everything mm-hmm. shifted for us in a big way. Oh, March is a busy month for, for that. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah, and so and I had, he had stamped it on my arm before he had revealed to us so I had this tattoo before we knew that that was the date. Wow. wow. And so, and then it's continued to unfold and unpack for us since then in some pretty cool ways with some things he's shown us, but that's what that's about. Powerful. I don't even know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, I got, you got notes. notes. Mm-hmm. You got notes. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Powerful. Man, brother. Mm-hmm. Man. I, I'm, I'm, I, I keep feeling like I'm I just about to bust my eyes about to bust with tears. I'm, I mean, for real, mm. for real. My goodness. Mm. Can you all give, uh, can you give us, give us, uh, give us a few words that you would use to describe each other? How would you describe each other? I'll go first. I would say, um, strong, mm-hmm. um, brave, Bold, fiery, um, loving, so loving and tender. Mm -hmm. Um, And what is the word for, (laughs) like, what is the word? Not relentless. He never gives up. Mm -hmm. Like, he just will not give up. He's Mm -hmm. persistent. Mm -hmm. He is persistent Mm -hmm. and faithful. Wow. So faithful. Wow. See, and that's the miracle of Jesus right there is uh-huh. that she can sit here and say that about me. <clears throat> Man, don't make me throw because these. Th- I'm going to feel like I'm going to throw my cart. <laughs> yes, sir. I, um, I, yes, I'll sir. answer. The, I didn't want to move on. I'm so glad you asked the follow up question because I was going to have to, like, I was feeling in my guts it wasn't time to move on because I shared what I shared. Mm-hmm. But the most beautiful part about yes. that yes. is the way that she responded. You know, like I said, I didn't want to. Share that for share that for her, but I'm going to make sure this gets this part gets out there is because, in that was in March of 2009. Well, several weeks earlier, we had lost the baby, so there's a lot of stuff going on, and and, yeah. the, and she went in when that happened. When I told her what I had done, she Elijah Richie was about ten months old, and uh, she took him to the neighbor. Cause I'm like, casually, I'm about to yell. <laughs> casually, calmly took him to the neighbor. Oh, that was smart. And she went yeah. inside and she said something along the lines of, Lord, the two things that I did not think I could handle or live through have happened in the last few months. Wow. I've lost a child. And my husband's been unfaithful. And she said, I've asked you to protect my marriage. And the Lord looked very clearly said to her, I am. Wow. And then you, what was the passage that he spoke to you in that moment? It was in Isaiah when it talks about um, healing will spring up quickly. And he Mm -hmm. told me, he said, Melissa, if you will, um, like you have a choice. And he's like, Mm -hmm. if you Mm -hmm. will um, trust me and give me this, then I'll heal it and I'll heal it quickly, you know. Um, But, uh, you know, it, it required me laying down 
you know, my rights to say, well, I'm hurt, you know. Yeah. And you know what? Like, we, I don't want to sound like I'm being insensitive to anybody, but at the, the truth of it is, it's like when you look at the life of Jesus, mm-hmm. like, yes, yes, he ma'am. has experienced every, everything. Yes, ma'am. And he's, he's love. And honestly, like, I'm so thankful for that process because I was able to learn lo- love was being perfected in me. I was able to see, like, because this is what he showed me. He's like, Melissa, I don't have a right to be angry with him because I've done the same thing to the Lord. Wow. Who am I? Mm-hmm. Who am I to get mad? And and like and I'm not saying that that's an excuse to for, but I mean he was incredibly repentant and very like broken over mm-hmm. what had happened. And I'm like I can't hold this. Like I'm commanded to forgive, mm-hmm. and um, wow. and I mean honestly, it was just another way to identify in the suffering of Christ and to know Him mm-hmm. deep more deeply. Wow, you know. And, and he did just what he said he would do. Wow. He healed that thing. Yeah. Ooh. yeah. Quickly. Quickly. And honestly, like, we say this all the time, or I say this, like, walking through stuff like that, when you're surrendered to the Lord and you give it to him, like, I'm, like, I know this man loves me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, his, div- mm-hmm. like, I have watched him open up and, like, share things and just like completely turn his heart inside out Mm -hmm. to, to me and to the Lord. And I'm like, there's no, it just deepens your relationship Mm -hmm. is all it does Mm -hmm. is it deepens it. You know, I agree 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't want that to sound insensitive to anybody or like it was some cakewalk and it happened overnight and we were like moving to trial of law, moving along. I mean, but I, have experienced the eyes of Jesus in those eyes yeah. for 24 years. Yes, sir. And um, the way that she is able to just stay surrendered has, like, you know, time and time and time again just met me in mm-hmm. that space. Mm-hmm. And that's what I've told her is, is like, you know, Anytime that she has moments where she's down on herself, you know, that's kind of our, that's my, that's my go-to is like, I am standing here today Mm -hmm. because of the countless Mm -hmm. times you have looked me in the face Mm -hmm. and loved me. Yes. When I, Mm -hmm. no, when nobody else. Yes, sir. Would. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And it's changed everything. Mm Mm-hmm. Baby, did you, did you, were you gonna ask me? I was just gonna say because I I'm I'm a I'm a filler and I don't like to leave people out in spaces by themselves, um, and I don't think we've ever shared our experience in that before, have we? No, but you, this this is just our second episode, so we right. we're not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we ever really talked about it because it was reconciled between the both of us, so right. we kind of kept mm-hmm. people out of it. Mm-hmm. But we experienced something similar. The mm-hmm. only difference was. We were engaged to be married, but he didn't tell me until after we had gotten married. Mm -hmm. And he had, um, he was not himself. He was like almost sick. And I knew something was wrong, but I couldn't put my finger on it. And I always tell my clients that, you know, the one thing you fear the most it's in your unconscious mind. It's going to come forth because you're constantly thinking about mm-hmm. it. And like you said, the two things that you never wanted to happen, happen. And I felt the same way. But it was the it was the heart of repentance mm-hmm. that I knew I couldn't tell anybody because I was justifiably okay to walk away. Yeah. And I knew that Jesus told me, I know he loves you yeah. and I know he, that's why he told you and yeah. that's why he hadn't been, mm-hmm. you know, and it was a little bit different situation. Mm-hmm. We were not married, yeah. um, but we were engaged. So, you know, to Southern girls engaged is married, <laughs> <honey>. <laughs> but no, we, so I definitely, whew, mm-hmm. 
Dad. For me, for me, um, my. Yeah, I you know, you get, you know how, it's like, I guess, my great aunt called me. Yes. And she's she like save save. She old school. And she's in the nineties. You know, she said, yeah, she's she's she was, a, she was, a, she was old at that time. You know, but the relationship between her and me was like son and. Period. Mother and son. It just she was my great aunt, but I I love that woman. Oh, I love that woman. Yeah. She would get on your nerves. Oh, she would get on my. She would bust you out in church because she was preaching. But she was old school. She called me. She said, "Cause I'm a junior." So she said, "Jerry Junior, you need to tell that girl everything." Yep. I said, "Way from California." Like, what? She's in California. <laughs> she just calls me out of nowhere. What well, my mom said. My mom told me that she wanted to talk to me. And she and I called her. I called her. I never forget. I was on, on the campus of UCA, and I was getting ready to go to a class. And she, I called her, and she was like, "You need to tell her everything." And I was like, uh, "Huh?" Yeah. And she said, "You need to tell her everything." And I got sick to my stomach for real because I was like, "Oh God!" Yeah, he looked but sick. It just, but I'm glad I was obedient yeah. to that thing. Yeah. I was, I was like, "Oh Jesus, oh God, oh God!" But yeah, whew. you don't want none of that yeah. rot gut, man. That rots the bones. It's man, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Not yes, good. sir. But Man. we're we're better because of that's yes. right. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So yeah. much better. Thank so y'all. Much better. That's this, yeah. This is good. Yeah. This is good. Yeah. I had no clue. I had no clue. This is we were gonna go down. Holy these Spirit, hi, Jack. Yes. Come on. Yes. 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 Um. Oh. Wow. At some point during you all's life and marriage, you you met this guy named Damon Thompson and Tammy Thompson, and um, how many years have you all? been following him and how did you even get connected and how, how did that happen That's, so so i i, I kind of grew up in just your more fundamental first baptist church guy mm -hmm. not so much her but when we met and got married uh after you know kind of like i said i wasn't really in church at all but at that point in time i'd kind of yes, bailed on all of it it was irrelevant to me the life i was living mm -hmm. i thought Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In my ignorance and, and stuff like that, but the Lord would even come to me in some of those crazy places I was in, and I would he I would encounter him, and he would speak to me, and it wow. was it was wow. he's so good. But when I met her, we began and I and got married, and we began to move around. We we kind of just kind of stayed in that more tra like fundamental vein. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I say all that to say that two thousand and let's say fourteen, fifteen, we were. We had plant. We planted a church with a group of friends, mm -hmm. people, in wow. 2010, um, and were there for several, several years. Mm -hmm. Moved to Dallas for a, a job, and then moved back, and we're still part of that. And um, in 2015, I started a business, mm -hmm. and um, and and I don't want to speak for you, but where I was at was Melissa has always had this really sweet, very authentic. Mm -hmm relationship with jesus mm -hmm. just her and abba her and holy spirit her and jesus you know wow in the closet she's just a worshiper making yes. flower i call her like snow white you know what mm -hmm. i mean or cinderella mm -hmm. she's just out in the backyard and the, uh -huh. the butterflies and yeah. the da dragonflies yeah. respond and yeah. that's just that's her in you know service too. <laughs> and uh, she's just <laughs> different, different dimension, you know. Yes. But from a from a from us and where we attended church, we were a part of just this kind of. It was more of a Baptist background, but kind of more reformed okay. kind of you know situation. Okay. Yes, but when I went off into my in my own business, um, I was in the desert, literally in South Texas, uh, working yeah. in the oil field. Okay. Wow. Okay. And I had gotten to the end of me. Mm -hmm. Like I was leading a group of men, and we were so, doing it all remotely. And uh, I was away from them. Mm -hmm. I was traveling. I would leave on a. I would leave on Friday. Um, I would leave on Sunday. I'm sorry. Work Monday through Friday. Drive home 13 hours. Mm -hmm. Stay at home Saturday and a little bit of Sunday, and then drive again. And we did that for a year. Wow. Oh, man. So at some point in all of that, I remember being in a crusty little hotel room in Catula, Texas, uh -huh. and I had these friends that we had met along the way that were, I called them my crazy charismatic friends, but uh -huh. they, they loved me <laughs> so well, I couldn't do anything except for honor them and love them back, but everything they did made me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everything. I got you. And um, so, But they had, over the years, sent me articles and videos and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So this mm -hmm. night in this hotel room, when I'm having this moment of like, I'm reading scripture and I'm just like, 
I don't know nothing about this abundant joy. What about right. this right. life to the full? You know what I mean? I'm a mess. Uh, I'm a mess. Yes, and I finally was like, Lord, I know there's got to be more to you. Yes, sir. And I want it all. Mm-hmm. If it's not you, I don't want it. But if it's you, I want it all. Wow. wow. And so I start digging in my old email box, inbox from, from my friends, and I find this video, and I start watching it. One thing leads to another, and I have a profound encounter. Holy Spirit comes in my hotel room, presses me down in my bed, speaks to me. Wow for a while and wow. then I, I, I fall asleep in the comfort of of that embrace and i wake up the next morning and call her expecting her to be like wow that's amazing she's like finally that's amazing. <laughs> i did not say finally <laughs> it was more Took like you long enough <laughs> you were in the closet praying yeah. for it? <laughs> it was more along the lines of i knew you i knew like that sounded like she knew that mm-hmm. this is what was happening you know mm-hmm. and that but that wow. sent us into this <laughs> i'm like i go back to the church where we're leading yes, and everybody's like, what is wrong with Luke yeah. Richardson? Uh-huh. You know, like the guy that's the, the, the scripture guy and the, yeah. the tweet out the one liners about all the revel, you know, uh-huh. is all I want to do is like put my hands on people and pray for them. And I'm uh-huh. praying the spirit. And, <laughs> and you know, I mean, it's just, we want to wow. change the, we want to change the game. Yes, sir. But after a few months, we realized like this isn't happening. But our pastor at that time, who's a dear friend of mine still to this day, he had the wisdom to recognize that. And he came to me, and Melissa had been praying, but he came to me and he said, I don't know what's going on with y'all, but I know you, Mm -hmm. and I trust it. Mm -hmm. So let's just walk this out. And then she had been praying that he would have a dream. And so he had a dream. And so him and I meet for breakfast one morning, and it's going to be the meeting where I'm like, man, something's got to shift. Mm-hmm. Before I could even speak, he's like, don't say anything. I had a dream last night. And this wow. is not a dream culture. Uh-huh. This is a white, this is a whiteboard circles, cast vision strategy yes, kind of yes, thing. Sir. And wow. he said, I had a dream last night and we sent you guys out. And so wow. anyway, ultimately that's what ended up happening. We were doing just church in our home mm-hmm. for just her and I and the kids for several months. And uh Ended up meeting some some people that were in town, kind of doing the same thing. Walked with them for about a year, and then one of the gentlemen in that um, group yes, invited me to an event in East Texas, mm-hmm. in Rockwall, Texas. And there was a guy there named Jeremiah Johnson, mm-hmm. um, uh, I guess a prophetic voice, you know. In the okay, and so on the second night of him ministering in this little small intimate setting, he calls me out of the back of the room, and he begins to, for like five solid minutes, just personal prophecy. And he's, for me, I needed, it was exactly what I needed because I'm still kind of new to this culture and not really sure. So he's just very like word of knowledge type specifics around our family. Mm -hmm. And then out of the blue, he goes into this thing and he says something along the lines, and you can correct me if I get any of this wrong. He says, you were invited here tonight because you have a fire that needs fathering. Wow. He said, you, you need the heart of the Lord with the word of the Lord. Wow. He said, you're cut from a different cloth. You will never fit in. And he paused and says something. You need to go find Damon Thompson. Wow. Oh. And, and I had never heard that name in my life. <laughs> wow. Just, Just like, that. like that. Just like that. And, and so I'm like a serial podcaster is by nature. If I find somebody that I like to listen to, especially since we're not, in church. So I was listening to a lot of Bill Johnson. I had a friend that was um, part of the group that early group that started the upper room. So I had kind of found, I was listening to a lot of like Michael Miller and, and, and Peter Lewis and those guys. And, and so, but just prior to go into this meeting with, with my friend Mickey, uh, I had felt like the Lord had invited me to stop podcasting and come away with him and get my own bread. And so when we, when I got this word, I'm like, I've got to honor this. Mm-hmm. And so I went and tried to find stuff online. You know, it's very, it's nothing out there. But I found the podcast and I'm used to a title. And this was just a date. So I like, whatever the most recent upload was, driving from Dallas one day, which is where my office for the company I worked for at that time, from Dallas to Shreveport on I-20, I put, mm-hmm. hit play and I heard his voice. And something and my baby jumped, kind of like Elizabeth yeah. with John the Baptist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And I sent yes, I sent it to her and I said, Who is this? This I said, This is our people. 
Now, what year was this? This is 2018. 2018. This is 2018. 2018. Okay, 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 yes, sir. So she listens to it, and she has a similar reaction. <clears throat> and then something that I can only describe as an act of God, because it's so out of character for me, uh-huh. is I didn't listen again for a year. We were deeply entrenched with some of the people that we had met, and we were convinced that we were going to win Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh-huh. That was home, and that's what we wanted to do. Uh-huh. And um, we were running with a couple of different overlapping groups of people in different ministries, and we had just uh-huh. built our dream house, which we were about to sell because we needed to relocate from the suburbs down into uh-huh. Shreveport, into the city, and yes, all this is happening. And we get to that point where we've sold our dream house, we've moved into an apartment, and we just begin to feel that feeling of like, where's the peace mm-hmm. to the tension? Yes, sir. And so we start walking. That's kind of our thing we do. We just walk. We take walks together and talk. Mm-hmm. And um, and one day she came out of prayer and she's like, honey, you need to go re- back and re-listen to that word from uh-huh. Jeremiah Johnson. It had been recorded on that church's little uh-huh. grainy Facebook live, you know. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And so I did, and before I knew what I had done, I booked us a flight to South Carolina and got us a hotel, and wow. and we went up there, and it was in our heart. We were just going to go check it out for the weekend. Mm-hmm. Our hearts were in Louisiana, but before we, we... were really praying about whether we were supposed to do Shreveport or go plant something in Athens, around Athens, like where his mama lives, like Athens, okay. out in the country. Yeah area around Ruston okay. which is what's which is crazy yeah it's crazy and, um and so but we 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 got in the room Friday night and that weekend there were just multiple unignorable witnesses that we were moving to South Carolina <laughs> I mean that it was familiar yeah it was not it wasn't subtle like he was very direct multiple times and but I mean honestly like I I can't explain this any other way, but it, y'all probably maybe felt the same way. But like walking into that that first night at Hope Chapel, listening, Paige was leading, Paige and Matt were leading, and just hearing that sound, mm-hmm. something in my spirit. It was like mm-hmm. I was able. It was like not being able to breathe for so long, and then all of a sudden I was just like. <gasps> taking like this deep breath and it was like something in me was released to where I was free. Mm -hmm. I was free to (laughs) worship though. And I've done that in my house, but I've never was in a place like that. And I was just, it was like so refreshing. I remember standing in the back of the room at Hope Chapel. So we, we didn't have a clue Mm -hmm. about like, all we know is just, you know, watching on Facebook live, you're thinking this is at least in some sort of a town. So we get off the we're, we're driving from our hotel out to Batesburg and I'm like this can't be right. <laughs> this is this is this yeah. can't be right. Yeah, yeah. So we pull up there and oh okay there's the chapel in the woods and there's people everywhere. There's like looks like they're having a barbecue or That's something. what I thought. We walked up and we didn't know you're supposed to like, nowhere. nowhere. It was in the middle of nowhere, but we, like people would line up and so to get into the doors, well, I, we walked up and, or we pulled up and I was thinking in my mind, I was like, cause we were early a little bit. And, um, I we was like, we, were early. <laughs> we thought we were early, but, um, we were like, oh, maybe they're having a church barbecue. <laughs> uh, no, so we, it was a lot. We walk up and stand in line, which is, I'm talking, you know, it's, it's a considerable line and we're at the back of it. So when they open the doors and start letting in, we end up in this overflow area back in the back hope chapel's got the sanctuary and then it extends into what used to be i'd call it the old fellowship hall you know which is linoleum floor and some like fluorescent lights and so we were back there and this dude um i didn't know from adams i'd never been there he looked at me and he goes how many of you got i told him he said and he led us up and set us right down on like the third row and um we sat there and i'm standing there and at hope chapel they always had what was called pre-service prayer so 30 minutes before the service started, the band would start playing and just kind of, you know, just host, just just preparing the atmosphere. Yeah. It was really special. Yes, sir. But um, I remember standing there having an experience of like just feeling the the wow. frequency in the, of the life in the room. And she walks up front. And so I'm standing and I look out the window and there's this huge fig tree. 
And there's all these little kids running around, jumping, falling out of the fig tree. It was just her and I, but I could see my kids playing in that fig tree. Yes, sir. And then I looked up and saw her, and I literally, in the spirit, saw her as like a rose that was kind of a little bit wilted and dry. Mm -hmm. And I just saw like the root of that flower find like wow. some some water, mm -hmm. and she just went. And I just, in that moment, I said, Lord, I will work three shifts at Walmart and Target and the graveyard shift if this is where my children and my wife wow. get to to live. Wow. And then there was some very obvious stuff that Pop said on Saturday night service to where he literally said. He had realtors stand up. He stopped. He said, I've never <laughs> done this before. And people, he goes, but I need all my realtors to stand up. And he started naming all the guys in the room and he goes now somebody's in here right now that needs to get with one of these people to move here and um and then the next morning i would i we'd gotten there late on a sunday morning and so i was back in the overflow again and i had given my seat up to a lady that was sitting so she so i was sitting in the floor mm -hmm. and um some point during that morning he's teaching on uh Ezekiel 47 about the flowing from the southeast corner of the temple mm -hmm. and ankle deep needy. Then he, he kind of goes on in one of his tangents and he said, oh, he goes, look at all these people around here from Louisiana. He said, I used to think I was going to move back to Louisiana, but I think the Lord's bringing Louisiana to me. Wow. And the lady sitting behind me tapped me on the shoulder and she goes, that could be you. <laughs> and then come to find out, I didn't know it, but it was Miss Anita was who was sitting behind me that okay. said that to me. But <laughs> did she know that you was from... No clue. And then so between all of that and then her and I just having a, one ounce of discernment, you know, we uh -huh. we go to the airport and we're sitting there waiting for our flight. And we were like, so we're moving to South Carolina. <laughs> and two weeks later, three. we, we brought, three weeks. We, we oh, brought no, our kids no, yeah, back you're right. okay. just to let them uh -huh. check it out. Uh -huh. And then we went back home and loaded our stuff we were out of our apartment and moved back. Three weeks wow. later, we moved. Wow. Mm -hmm. like been... Ben. That's wonderful, man. That's a yeah. So since 2018. Well, it was it was nice. So that 18s when we did all the went and it was 19 when we moved. So okay. we 19. moved in July 2019. Man, to to, to South Carolina. Bates, that's amazing. The metropolis of Batesburg, yeah. Leesville. <laughs> See, the that's that's how that's how. Uh, but that's not exactly the words of Judah. Uh, but he but he that's kind of how he talked yeah. about it as well. <laughs> he was like it was like yeah, in the middle like, of nowhere. Nothing, nothing. was there. <laughs> yeah. I took those boys to Walmart and Hibbit Sports about six times a month. You know what I mean? That was your outing. That was, and that's what Baseburg had. Wow. Wow. Man. Um so I mean we started hearing the message of um beloved identity in uh twenty twenty two. Um but you all have been like hearing it much longer. Been in it much longer. What would you say that the message is? Um, the message has done in you all since initially hearing it to now. What is what is that? What has that message done in you? Well, I feel like I've done all the talking. So if you've <laughs> <laughs> go on, I know you'll chime in if you have something. I know. Mm -hmm. I just feel like it's reframed everything for me. I feel like it's the actual gospel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the heart of the actual gospel. It's the, I feel like it is the the password or the key into living in the kingdom. Yes. Whereas I grew up, and I mean, to no fault of anybody's. I mean, yes, everybody sir. was doing yes, what sir. they thought was right. Yes, so sir. there's just so much grace to cover all of that. Yes, sir. But we all were, were under this message that's just not, the message. It's just not yes, the gospel. Yes, sir. So, you know, beloved identity in the message of beloved and then uh, and then beloved righteousness, mm -hmm. which which yes, weaning sir. day. Yes, sir. January twenty third, twenty twenty one for yes, me sir. was a big one. Yes, sir. But um it's just changed everything. It's it's given me permission to to start understanding that the voice, the taskmaster, the mm -hmm. has just it's not first of all, it's not the father, mm -hmm. and it's not even me. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. it's been a journey, but it has literally transformed my life and our, our lives. And, and like I said earlier, the way we parent, um, mm -hmm. cause I've, mm -hmm. I believe that, like you said, it is the essence of the good news. It is the essence of being in a family. This whole thing goes from 
um, information that we're supposed to try to get people to agree with us about so that whatever that's about, the ego of making sure people agree with us or that they're on our side. And it goes to where we're just in a family and, and we love because we're loved and we want other people to know yes. how loved they are and it's right. fun, <laughs> you know? And, yes, sir. And it's just good. Wow. I feel like for me, I, <clears throat> well, first of all, like I can't, you know, talk about Damon and Tammy without tears. Just I love them so much and yes. so thankful. Yes. I, um, when, when we came to South Carolina the first time, um, I've never even told him this, but um, our kids went to the same school. Our boy, uh, Elijah played football on the football team, and um, it was my turn as a mom to carry, uh, to bring Gatorades and stuff. Mm-hmm. And um, I remember I'm carrying this giant, uh, heavy, like, was it like a, what are those things? Yeti, like ice chest full of drinks. And um, I'm leaving. I'm going back out to my car. And Damon stops me and he goes, let me get that for you. And he goes, you just open the door. And in that moment, the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, um, that's why you're here. And that's like the been the perfect picture of who he's been to me as a spiritual father is um, I was carrying such a heavy load and I'm just like the, just him, he, like just having that, I don't know how to explain it, but it was like an immediate covering that is so pure oh. and so fiery yeah. and so amazing, you know, that I just, I was able to really heal and rest And um, I just have just the most love and honor and respect. Um, And as far as like beloved identity, my journey was very unique in that I didn't find the Lord. Well, none of us find the Lord. I mean, like, (laughs) but you know, (laughs) I I didn't first encounter him Uh in church. I encountered him in my daddy's lap Mm -hmm. and in my daddy's arms. Mm -hmm. And um, so kind of going through that, that was true for a a while. And then there was a point in time when, you know, the poo poo hit the fan in my family. And, you know, so there was a period of time where I feel like I kind of spiritually was on my own. Um, and, but because of that, and I'm so, I have so much honor and love for my dad because he, he showed me who he was, who Jesus was, you know? Um, but because of that, I was able to quickly, um, find him as Papa, you know, he was always Papa, but I was able to find him as Papa. And I remember just laying in the bed, listening to the chaos downstairs. And I remember just very vividly when I was probably about 11 or 12. And I heard just a chaos downstairs. But I, I was crying and I just said, Lord, hold me. Papa, hold me. And I could feel his hand, arms wrapped around me. And he just peace wash over me and it was like I am so thankful for that because I learned him as papa in those places um and so I knew that I was loved and because my dad loved me the way he loved me I I I didn't struggle with that but what I did struggle with was um just that idea of like the manipulation of the enemy to to like I love the Lord so much. And there was a lot of like, no room for error. Like, 
shame, I would say, like shame of like, you know, you mess up and it's like shame on you. And then learning that and coming out of that, um, recognizing that more so than anything of like, that's not really how you feel about me, you know, at all. And, um, so yeah, that's, Mm -hmm. man, (laughs) oh man, this is amazing. This is amazing. This is powerful. Wow. You know, uh, I really, as I was driving the truck today, I was praying and asking the Lord to be with us. Mm-hmm. I didn't pray before we started, but I was praying. <laughs> yeah, I prayed earlier today. I was, God, be with us. And be out of time. And if those who may be watching, if you ever listen to any of the podcasts that Pop does with um, with Pastor Brand, mm-hmm. there are times where they just let's sit in the moment, just... Mm-hmm. Just let that thing just marinate on our hearts because it's, it's such a tender moment. Mm. When he's moving yeah. and speaking. Um, wow. Mm. That you say, you say he, he told you, you know, let me get that for you. <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. He bring he brings us in places to take that load away from us, so we can move heaven. So it's amazing. Um, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go a little deeper, because mm-hmm. I don't want to keep y'all all night. Y'all got children. <laughs> We're good. <laughs> I got just, children. Just no rush. Yeah, though, seriously, I don't. Things to do. However, uh, this needs to go for you guys. Um, We're good. In 2020, um, you you begin to deal with. Um, your first round of cancer. Mm-hmm. Um, can you talk about what 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 caused an alarm in you, and what how, what did you how did you feel? What was going on? That yeah. So um, I actually it was right before we moved to South Carolina um, that I started noticing some changes, and then. Um, I was like, oh, it's probably just like hormonal and kind of just threw it off. And then because I have no history or anything like that in my family. Um, I was very healthy. I worked out. I ate good. All the things. Right. Yeah. Get a pass. Checked. Checked all the boxes, <laughs> man. Um, yeah. oh, that's so funny. Okay. She doesn't even take a Tylenol if she needs to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but um, drink some water. Uh, drink some water. <laughs> Rub some water on it. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Um, but when I got to um, South Carolina, well, I'll, I'll just say, like, the I, I, looking back, I can see where the Lord was preparing me for that. Um, and so when we moved you know, understandably, our, our families are amazing. They're amazing. Um, and, but they were, I would assume, and, you know, they were very respectful, but they're like, what, what the heck, what are y'all doing? You know? Mm -hmm. Um, but as we were, I remember this, like, as we were, uh, I was driving suburban packed full of children, dogs and stuff, (laughs) you know? (laughs) And I was headed I twenty um, towards South Carolina, and the sun was coming up. And I was listening to that song by the Helsers. I have like such a crush, like spiritual crush on Melissa Helser. I love her so much. I've, like I've heard of her. Love her so much. <laughs> um, crush in a good way. Uh-huh. But anyway, I was listening to that song um, where they're singing. I think it's Cageless Birds, or it's I'll follow you anywhere you want to go. And so I was just like, man, I'm, I'm living this right now. And so, um, whenever I started noticing all the changes happening, I was like, okay, the Lord told me through dreams. He's like, stop ignoring this, go, go get it looked at. And so I did. And I was in that in between time between like having a biopsy done 
and getting the report back. And I was taking a bath one night and I was listening to that song again. And I heard the Holy Spirit say, will you follow me anywhere that I want to go? And he said, Melissa, I'm light. And light is called to the dark places. I like to go to the dark places and light it up. Will you follow me there? And I could feel the fear of the Lord on that question. So I was not quick to, I wasn't quick to be like, yes. I was like, I felt the cost. I felt the cost on it. And I just said, if it, if you will go with me, as long as you're with me, and if it gets me more of you, then yes, I will go. I will go. And I knew in that moment, I was like, okay, this is, I'm fixing to walk a journey. Um, and so in that, you know, we, we got the biopsy done. And when I got it back, then it was, um, you know, it came back positive, obviously. Um, do you want me to stop? Is that where you want me to stop there? You, you do your thing. However, I, listen, we, yeah. yes, man, we're open. I, you know, um, I, I, um, I didn't cut her off. She just stopped talking, y'all. I, I, <laughs> yeah, no. I don't want y'all mad at me. No, I, I well, I, I didn't want to just like go on and on and on. If that, I kind of answered the question, I well, felt like but no, 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 no. Okay, um, I, I was looking because I didn't know this. I didn't know this. I knew, I knew about what I heard in twenty twenty three. But I didn't know about the 2020. Mm-hmm. And I had, you, well, I, I guess I did. Maybe I've heard some in church. Somebody said something about it. But as I began to look and do research, and I'm like, oh, my goodness, 2020. I saw a video of you sitting in front of a mirror. You're sitting there, and you're cutting all of your hair out. You. What were you thinking in that moment? What are you thinking? You're sitting there. Beautiful, long, flowing hair. And your husband is there. You help her. You're helping. What are you thinking in that? I mean, it's like. I can't even describe. Well, I, I feel like I have to share a little bit how I got there was. Um, you know, the day that we got a diagnosis, you know, the first time. um was April 6th, 2020. And uh, they the world had just shut down for COVID, the COVID pandemic. Oh, really? Yeah. So during all of this stuff, I can't go into doctor's appointments with her. I'm having to drop her off. It's just wild. Man. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. But um, on the day you got the diagnosis, 20, mm-hmm. that's when it does everything. Okay. Well, like, uh, it was like right yeah, was within two weeks. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, wow. Mm-hmm. So. When they called and were like, yes, you know, it is positive for cancer. Um, he and I were sit, are standing on the back deck and we just embraced and we're just like, you know, so this is what this feels like. You know, it was really what I said. I was just like, wow, okay. And then I immediately thought like, oh, God, I don't want to have to go tell the kids. Like, God, that's going to be yeah. sucky, you know, yeah. like. um. Wow. But we went upstairs and we told the kids and, you know, they handled it really well. Um, I just feel like there's just grace in those moments that he meets you there. Like, you know, there's just grace. And so um, we went and called, you know, our parents and, you know, all the people and, um, it was really interesting because um, I called my dad and he was driving home from a hunting trip and I called him and told him and he, his response, before he could even ask the Lord, he heard the Lord say, she will hold her grandbabies. And he just said, that's the word of the Lord. And I was just like, okay, we're just, he goes, thank you, Lord. He goes, I didn't even have to ask him. I just, I just heard that. Um, and then the Lord told Damon the same thing. And so it was just confirmed in that. And, um, 
But that night, you know, just having that same conversation over and over and over again was exhausting. Yeah. Um, I was in my closet and I just was like crying, like, Lord, like what in the world? I was just like crying. And then I found myself just getting angry. I was mad because I was just like, no, I'm like, this is the day that you have made. Cause I started thinking about like how I would remember this day and our, um, Hallie and Titus had just had a birthday. And so I had some balloons in my closet and I looked over and I felt the Lord say, you worship today. Like you're on the other side of this mountain. He goes, I want you to blow these balloons up and fill them with hope. And I want you to have a party. And I want you to party with your children. And you dance like you on the other side of this because you know how this is going to go. I'm going to heal you. I'm going to heal you. And so that is exactly what we did. We blew those balloons up. And April 6th, every year we celebrate like that has become a day of celebration. And I, we will remember this day as a day of celebration, not a day of diagnosis, you know, of just your faithfulness, Lord. And so in that process, and I walked with um, Johnson Dorn. I love that man. If y'all know him, and to know him is to love him. He is incredible. He is a um, gift. A gift. And he had walked through cancer and it, 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 for me, it was just such a inner healing journey. Like the Lord was like, I'm going to heal all of you. I'm going to heal your heart and I'm going to heal your body. Um, and so through that, he had spoken about, um, you know, beauty for ashes, joy for mourning, praise for heaviness. And, um, and he told me, he goes, um, I didn't, I did not want to lose my hair, you know, obviously. Um, but he, what he told me in that is he said, Melissa, I'm going to give you a new headdress. Mm -hmm. And um, on July 4th, my hair started falling out, and um, which Independence Day, you know, um, freedom. And I heard the Lord say, as it began to fall out, I heard him say, are you ready to receive your new headdress? And I said, I just cried because, you know, it was like it was a letting go. But then it was like, I cannot explain to you the moment those clippers hit my head. Boom. I was filled with the joy of the Lord <laughs> like I have never experienced in my life. Wow. And he met me there <laughs> in that great. space where it wow. just was like, I just can't even explain it. Mm -hmm. It was like so much joy I felt um, to where it was not sad. It was joyous. Wow. And um, because that is who he is. That's who he is. Mm -hmm. Like, if we, when in, encountering difficulty or encountering things that would deem seem bad mm -hmm. if we will open up and trust him yes. and surrender yes, he meets us there mm -hmm. every time yes, and we encounter a joy a peace a comfort that is not of this world mm -hmm. it is of the spirit and it doesn't make sense but what that does is it confronts the fear because that's what people fear is what is this going to feel like? What is this, this sorrow or whatever? And it's like, we are not, we don't live in that dimension. We're not called to live. We're not under that. So who says it's bad? Who says? Like if Jesus, if I've been co-crucified, co-buried and co-resurrected with him, Death does no no longer has a say in my life. Which if you look at fear, every fear you can trace back down to death. Mm -hmm. And we as believers are not called to live in any form of fear. We were made from love, mm -hmm. 
in love, by love, spun out of that circle dance of father, son, and spirit. That's where we originate. So fear is actually a foreign, foreign to our very genetic makeup, you know, which I believe is the root of all diseases and all cancers is fear is the root of that because it's foreign to our what we were created from and so for me this whole journey has been like okay okay like there's there must be more fear and this is for my freedom not to harm me this is for my good you know and it's like in the kingdom we have victory. Yes, that ma'am. is settled. Yes, ma'am. That's settled. We. It's not a question. It's the blood of Jesus is what it is. It's the blood of Jesus that speaks a better word. And that is the highest authority. You know, that's the highest authority. And when we take that body and we take that blood and we join our faith with that mm-hmm. and we declare like, no, and that really not just becomes head knowledge, but it becomes incarnate in who we are. It's entwined in us. And then that power begins to manifest in our bodies. It begins to manifest around us. But it can't, it has to go from head knowledge to incarnate, becoming entwined as one, you know, and that's where the power is. It's not, you know, in head. But the thing of that is, is that is going to require a dying that's going to require how do you overcome fear facing it but we spend our life trying to avoid pain Mm -hmm. but it's in his suffering that when we suffer we see we experience the resurrection in the death but very few nobody wants to die nobody wants to die but you can experience the heavenly realm, you can't experience that dimension without the death. And it's not a sacrifice. When you see what is on the other side, it's not a sacrifice. You know, it is, we got the best end of that deal. You know, we really do. And there is a place you can get to. And I believe there's dimensions of his heart and his face and his eyes that you can't get to without the suffering because he meets you there when you're vomiting on the floor and you have literally no strength left into your body. And he meets you there and he whispers in your ear, I'm right here. I'm right here. I'm right here. And when you're crying, you're just like, where are you? I'm exhausted. And he's like, I'm right here. There's a love and a peace and a part of him that you cannot experience other than that. He really is who he says he is. That's just the fact of it. And if you're willing to just surrender and say yes to the journey, it's, it's, it may not be easy, but it is so worth it. Because on the other side, you get to a place where it's like, what are, death? What is death? What is death? Because there's no separation, you know, to be one with him. There's no separation. You're entwined. It's in perfect union, seamless union. So it's like, what is death? There is no separation. That's the fear of it is being separate. And there's none. So it's like. It doesn't get a, vo- a voice. It no longer has a voice because he has taken care of that on our behalf, you know? And I believe that, like, the deeper, the more we're willing to believe that and really believe that, you know, is to the degree that we're going to start seeing the transformation happen in this earth that. I'm like, where are the things? Where are the signs? Where are the wonders? Where's the the dead being raised? It's, you know, but it's like we have become so distracted because it's been here and not here, you know. But I believe that's changing. Yes. I believe that's changing. That's my wife right there. (laughs) 
This the, so maybe I did out punt my coverage. Like <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh uh-uh. uh. <laughs> they did they didn't know how far you could punt. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Hey, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> man, listen, no, no, no. It's good, oh, man. My God, this is wonderful. So Thank you, good. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Now I understand why there was like so much joy. And she would cut your hair. There was no, you didn't look like you was married. And your children, they, you know, they did, they weren't standing over on the side crying. And your husband is engaging and is helping you, trying to make sure you, you know, you look, you look right. And he, and so now because you said in that moment, joy. And so, wow, mm. this is, this is so amazing. This is so so amazing. But I just want to ask you this. But you, you went, you all went to Spain. Is that uh-huh. for, for for the treatment? The I did. Treatment. Yeah, I did. Um, I did multiple things. I did. Um, I had a double mastectomy with reconstruction. I did um, chemo. And then um, I went to Spain for two weeks and had like holistic treatments. And um, I did some really cool stuff over that's there. Wow. That's wonderful. So wonderful. wonderful. That was round one. <laughs> wonderful. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Like the double mistake. Mm-hmm. Wow. And so you all, I'm just going to transition and just. Yeah, keep going. You're it. there. Now, this is going on in South Carolina. Mm-hmm. Correct. That's happening. Yeah. And then at some point, you all get a, a message like other folks there uh, that Pops is moving to Mobile. Mm-hmm. And you all make the move from South Carolina to Mobile. Um, and I ask you the same thing I asked the boys. Did you ever think that you would move to South Carolina? Not before July the 5th, 2019, <laughs> I didn't. And that day it was, we had moved a lot. Yes, sir. But we had moved around like North Louisiana, East Texas, Dallas. My first job out of college was in Tennessee. But once we moved back from Tennessee, it was East Texas, North Louisiana. We just kind of kept. Yeah, that area. Sure. So this, this, our family had gotten used to us being in within an hour, yeah. hour and a half. Yeah. So South Carolina was a curveball for all of us, yeah. for sure. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question about moving from South Carolina, like mm-hmm. what's interesting about that is we, uh, we had been having dreams um, for a while <laughs> and didn't understand what they were about. And then um, it was actually on March 15th. No, March. Yeah. No, March 16th, 316. Mm-hmm. Um, where on March 14th, uh, I was at prayer and Damon, he came up to me and said, hey, I want to meet. If you guys can meet, would like to meet with you and Luke um, in my office mm-hmm. on the 16th. And so we did. And that's when he shared with us about mobile and whenever um it was not even a question Mm -hmm. because in that moment i was like it was like the lord had already been giving us dreams and telling us that in our dreams so it was like we don't even need to pray about this like we know Mm -hmm. that this is this is what we're supposed to do and so in that that moment holy this is what this is how good this is how this went for me personally I could feel what was coming. Mm -hmm. I could feel what they were about to share. Not the details, but I knew Mm -hmm. what was about to happen. And I said, Lord, if he asked me to stay, I'll stay. But if not, I'm with him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. And um, with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. And um, yes, sir. And so anyway, he didn't ask us to stay. So we (laughs) we were mobile bound. (laughs) Thanks, Lord. A S A P. Yeah. so beforehand, so just like the boys, because the boys told me they 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 knew there was something coming. Mm-hmm. They could feel something happening. Yeah, couldn't put my hand on it, mm-hmm. but I could feel something happen. So just like even with you all, even yeah. though you you knew something was he was given some kind of sign, and you know, hey, yeah. we know something is happening. I had, had we had bought so when we first lived in South Carolina, which was a supremely incredible. Even with what we walk through, mm-hmm. important part of our life, I love it. Yes, sir. There's people there that I love dearly. That yeah. space, that 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 chapel. Yes, sir. The, those it's, mountains. Yes, I mean, sir. it's amazing. Yes. Yeah. Um, marked. I mean, there's a there's a it's 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 a piece of home. Mm-hmm. 
but we lived in a rental for the first year. Mm -hmm. And then we had a cup of coffee in a new construction master plan community thing, new uh -huh. house. Uh -huh. it, was yeah, I mean, it was literally six months. We were like, we got to get out of this rental. We got to get back into a house. And uh -huh. we bought a house that was not in. It's the mistake that most people that would move there would make. Mm -hmm. We want to be here for mm -hmm. for revival, but we want to live in an actual city. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we moved gotcha. up that direction. And then everything we did was in the country out by the church, right. even the kids' school and sports. So wow. after about six months, we were like, this ain't it. Yeah. Um, and so we, uh, Taylor Martin, uh -huh. he's a yeah. great friend, and him and Carson are, are really special and precious to us. But he was a realtor there, too. Yes, sir. And he said, you know, let me sell this house. And I said, dude, find me one to move into, and I'll you can list uh -huh. it tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> so he took me up on it. <laughs> wow. And he listed it and sold it within, like, three days. And I was like, now you got to find us one. Right. <laughs> and so, anyway, we, we found a house on, like, three acres right near the, the church, which yeah, is right awesome. near the kids' school. Yeah. Amazing. And That's so wonderful. we were loving that. Yes, sir. And there was a little shed out on the property, and we moved in in the middle of the summer, so I was not going in the shed because mm -hmm. I knew there was critters out right. there. <laughs> so so come February 2022, it's cold. Uh -huh. So I'm like, I can go to the shed now. Right. Most right. of those critters are uh -huh. yes, dormant, sir. hopefully. Right. right. And so I had... I hear he means snakes. Yeah. Let's just be really real. Large spiders, snakes. snakes. You know? I got you. Um, I got you. So I'm in the shed cleaning up, having to trying to get my stuff in and the other guys that live there's old stuff out and just uh -huh. having a day, a guy day. Uh -huh. And Holy Spirit told me, go back and listen to the podcast from the very first time you ever went to Hope Chapel. And I hadn't listened to it since. Mm -hmm. And so I went back and I'm listening to it and I'm just getting smoked. I'm just in the, I'm we. I got my earbuds in, I'm crying. I got my hands in the air. I'm on the knees on the ground in the shed, all the funky shed. I'm just getting, I'm having a moment. And then... The Lord spoke to me very clearly, and and he and he just made it very very clear like there was a shift. Mm. It was everything was fixing to change. Yes, and I told her, and a few days later we we went in to meet with Johnson for lunch. We just were having him, him Johnson and Sharon, um, Miss Sharon. Mm. Her grandma's name was Melissa Richardson. Whoa, Johnson wow. Dorn's wife Sharon's grandmother was named Melissa Richardson. We always found that to be interesting, so <laughs> she would call her grandma. Yeah. But we met them for lunch and began to share some of the things that were in our heart mm -hmm. about what we were feeling with all the shifts. And he acknowledged it and confirmed it and spoke um, just a lot of peace over us. We just love him. And then a few weeks later, there was a a night when, when um, Damon had just kind of started coming back from his kind of health mm -hmm. journey. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a night at Hope Chapel, February 25th, 2022. I had a moment in the altar. And uh, that night was a Friday night. And then the next day, everybody started going to Covington. Mm -hmm. And there was about a, mm -hmm. a one-month period where everybody was going to Covington. Mm -hmm. and, like, mm -hmm. and then from Covington is when the Chattanooga, like right. the eight-year anniversary of Chattanooga, mm -hmm. and everybody was going right. up there. right. And we were kind of all in that flow, and you could just feel. Mm -hmm. I think anybody that has a pulse could feel like right. something was mm -hmm. fixing the shift. Different and she yeah. fixing the shift, yeah. you know. And then for us personally, we had had some personal encounters, so that day was not a shock to us, but it was exciting, and it was a bit of a shock. Yeah, but it was. It felt like a culmination of some things we had been, you know, praying into and believing for. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I don't think this is the way you're supposed to do stuff. But I asked what I asked for, and so I, I'm grateful because um, I really believe this is a holy moment, just, it just our it time so together. Good. It is so big. And this is so blessed to me. Like we come for, we come down for uh, under the oaks. Shiva, and we had already moved all our stuff into a storage and everything. And mm. We were staying with our parents for a month, for the whole month of July. We come down in July, and uh, we go to Under the Oaks, and we stay for the reunion weekend. While we're there, we just, I see a we see a post on July the third, twenty twenty three. Um, you all are probably private people. I would say. Um, mm. uh, but why would you choose to? Uh, make an announcement like that and not be private and be like, look, 
We don't we don't even we don't even do lives that much. We don't know how this is gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> but you you sat by your bride. And you all just talked and shared mm. in like crazy strength. Like, wow, I'm like, I'm sitting here like I'm locking right. this like what? <laughs> Look at their faces. Like, how are they? What is? What? I ain't never seen nobody do nothing like this. So, so much peace. What is? What is? Th- I mean, how 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 were you all able to come to that moment and say, let's let's do it like this this time? Well, I mean, we had time to process, you know, and we we process with the Lord, um, but. Honestly, like my motivation for that was I knew what the Lord had said to me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, if I'm going to walk through this, I'm going to do it. Like, because I am a, a private, pretty private person, I would say. I'm, I'm more introverted, I think, than private because I'm pretty open book. Mm-hmm. But um, I just knew, like... If I'm going to walk through this, then I am going to tell the whole wide world. Mm -hmm. They're going to know. They're going to know on this side and they're going to know on that side Mm -hmm. because I know that he's going to heal me. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm like, you know, and and in my healing journey, I was there was a period of time when I was, you know, I I was really hidden. Like I felt like I was really in like a cocoon Mm -hmm. and just, um didn't really see anybody, talk to anybody, but I was just with him. Mm-hmm. Um, so special, but I, my purpose in that was not to get attention, not to even, it was for him to get attention. Mm-hmm. That, wow. that was, that really is wow. the answer to that question because I knew that he was going to heal me. Mm-hmm. And so I'm just like, you know, in the full redemption of some of these words that we all grew up saying in church, like grace. Yeah. You know, that's that is there is literally a God energy, mm-hmm. a covering um, grace. Yes, it's sir. his power, his love yes, sir. in that moment. Yeah. You know, because people would come to me and say, man, I don't know how you do that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. he's like, well, I ain't going through nothing or that's nothing compared to what y'all are going through. And I'd say, no, 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 man. Mm-hmm. pain's pain, mm-hmm. doubt's doubt, tight spot's a tight spot. Mm-hmm. I have the grace mm-hmm. to sit by here, sit right here beside her and walk through this because it's what he's walking us through. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, You know what I mean? So yeah. I, and it never was a, mm-hmm. oh man, we're amazing because we're able to walk. Through. It's just one of these deals of like, would you look at him? Mm-hmm. Would you look with what he's able to do if you just trust? Because this whole thing for us has been about an evolution of trust. Because mm-hmm. just prior to the news, in June, which was the second, like the recurrence news, mm-hmm. we had went through like a crazy financial situation, which is when we moved to Mobile, the, the, the business partnership that I'd been in for several years, they basically kind of, we need you to move back to Dallas. Mm-hmm. And we had literally just closed on a house in June. Wow. And um, June 3rd, we moved, we closed on a house in Mobile. And June 27th, I got a phone call like, hey, if you, we, we need to figure something out. We need you back in Dallas. Mm. And wow. so from June until October, I was unemployed. Wow. And every day, everything in me as a, ha- as a husband and a dad wanted to get up and go do stuff. And there, was, there were moments when I would like feel led by the Spirit to like reach out to somebody and make a phone. I don't, I'm not going to pretend like I didn't pursue anything. Yes, sir. But so the, invita- the, Holy the invitation from the Lord was to sit in this crusty little white chair that we had <laughs> bought as part of the house that we had bought that they uh-huh. left there yes, sir. and sit there. Yes, sir. And when everything in me wanted to get up and go pull all the levers and make sure I was going to provide for my yes. family, he would tell me just to keep sitting there with him yeah. and just opening my heart and letting him just talk to me about how trustworthy he is. Wow, and then he would begin to prompt my heart to give. 
he would put people before my face mm -hmm. and start talking to me about giving. And I would start thinking about the little amounts that I could afford to give. And then he'd start <laughs> talking about, no, I want, you know, and he would start uh -huh. talking to me about what he wanted me to give. Uh -huh. And we got down to the point to where, um, it's time to get something done. Uh -huh. And there was a day where there was a job situation and I knew that I could have got the job if I'd have made the phone call, but I also knew that he wanted me to stay still. And this is what he said to me. He said, you can go get that job right now. And a lot of people that know something, a lot of people that know a little bit about what's going on with y'all will go, praise the Lord, uh -huh. God provides, but you would know. Uh -huh. yeah. And that would be the space where those wow. doubts would have room to like grab a hold of, you know, because he goes, wow. this is about the fullness. Mm -hmm. so good. This is about the fullness. Yeah. And so oh. to her point, not I didn't see any of this coming that we were about to walk yes, sir. through. Yes, sir. But you know, when I read things like "Consider it pure joy, my brethren, mm -hmm. when you face trials of various mm -hmm. kinds, yes, dot 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 dot, that you would be perfect, lacking in nothing." Yeah. I know that the man I am sitting here today is still being perfected. Yes, sir. But where I am today, I am because of what we've walked through, mm -hmm. not because of what I've heard somebody else talk about. Right. You right. know, and. <laughs> And there's a place where the rubber meets the road and you experience him in those moments. And then they just lose all their grip. I'm convinced that fear is the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Fear's the foe. Yes, sir. Because it it it's, it's, it's fear of death or abandonment, which are of yes. the same thing. Wow. You know, it's fear of him not being provider, which is abandonment, which is some form of death. You know what yes, I mean? Sir. And yes, so sir. I'm fully convinced that we, what we are being taught, mm -hmm. yes, sir. the actual gospel. Yes, sir. And then growing up to, out of what Paul would call the elementary teachings of Christ. You're right. Yes, sir. We're getting yes, sir. taught the truth, mm -hmm. which is empowering us to believe rightly about Yahweh and ourselves. Yes. And so yes, at this point, I believe that when we believe rightly, mm -hmm. because we're made in his image, we yes, begin sir. to manifest in our bodies mm -hmm. and in the world around us yes. the kingdom. Just as if we focus on negative things mm -hmm. and we're negative and we believe, we empower and we create and we mm -hmm. draw. I, I mean, I don't want to go too deep down that road, but I'm firmly convinced that when fear plays a role and we come into agreement with it because of the dignity that we have being made in His image, the dignity of design, that matters. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, so you can talk all you want to talk, whether you're a believer, a Christian, or whether you're the other end of the spectrum. Yes, sir. We're made in his image. Yes, sir. And what we come into agreement with matters. Yes, sir. And so when you start to understand who you are and who he is and how safe he is and how good he is, and we throw off this nonsense about everything's got to be so, like, the heresy police quit blowing their whistle every 15 minutes and we just get lost in his face. Yes, sir. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. Then we start believing things that actually change the world, beginning in our own yeah. hearts and our own minds. And the deserts bloom, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. You know, um, arise and shine, your light has come. I'm doing a new thing. Do you not right. perceive it? Right. I mean, this is when these prophecies right. start becoming realities. Yes, sir. And it happens right here. Yes, sir. And it happens right here in the heavens. Yes, sir. And then it starts happening in our children. Then it starts happening in our neighborhoods, you know. And so I really do believe it. Really do. Woo. That was it at the end of that one. <laughs> <laughs> but to your question about the Facebook video, I was merely supporting my wife. I don't do social media really at all, but she felt strongly about that, and that's my number one. And she is super discreet. She is not a put herself out there like she is a very very discreet she's probably the most purposeful person i know like she has if if the lord speaks to her she'll do it without question but even even then she's very purposeful and discreet so when i when she said that that's something she wanted to do i knew that we were going to do it but uh we had had two or three weeks to process and there was such a grace and um and we had had some encounter we we, we spent a real special week and a hilarious week <laughs> on the beach, which was our vacation that, you know, we can once we had the vacation planned. Mm -hmm. And then once we got the news, we just kind of the day before we were supposed to leave on the vacation, uh -huh. 
we got the news, but we continued on and went on the vacation. Yes, sir. And it was, um, it was just a, one of those trips where it's it was the very prophetic of it was, the year we were about to. It walk. was prophetic. It was unforgettable in so many ways, mm-hmm. and uh, and and it mattered a lot. So we had had we had that week. Uh, we had some special time with uh just some special friends and some and got and, and then we were able to kind of start you know i guess how kind of engaging the world around us at that point you know now i want everybody to understand because i didn't say it she 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 told us about the first round but when she when I, we talk about the video on july 3rd she was going into her second round or i, I say second round but the re reemergence. How did how did you what was the word you used? I don't even know it what to call good. it. Reoccurrences. Reoccur. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. I honestly don't know that it was ever completely going. Mm-hmm. It, you know what I'm saying? Like okay. you look back and you're like, I don't know if that was ever. So it because it was the same. It was tested. Mm-hmm. You know, and it was the same cancer that was before. And so, but it had <clears throat> metastasized. Mm-hmm. And um, so yeah. Man. So that that's so twice, twice. And the first round was, if we're if we're just being very very honest, as tough as it is to get that news. That's a very, I mean, you learn a lot fast when you get that kind of news. Mm-hmm. You know, you learn a lot so, fast, mm-hmm. whether you want to or not. Yes. But um, you learn that you know when it comes to like uh, I guess the news that doctors can give you. That was a, it wasn't like child's play type stuff, but it was treatable. It was a treatable situation as far as what she was diagnosed with and then what we ended up doing. This this second round in, in June of 2023 was not the news you want to get. Um, we hear things like untreatable or uncurable is the word that they say um there's more we can we'll see how far you want to go in that but it was just a completely different experience in 2023 as far as what we what we the news we got i'm gonna let you go i, I want to read something because when i read this oh, oh i had tears all over my macbook uh melissa you said this you said luke hasn't left my side he's held my head he cleaned me prayed over me without ceasing, washed me in the word constant. That was what jacked me up. He washed me in the word constantly, all while all while still working full-time and parenting full-time, not complaining. That's what she had to say about her man. It's true. He, he, he covered me, he held my head, Cleaned me, prayed over me without ceasing. See, that, that's why I was like, man, I, I feel like it was significant that both of you all were here. I didn't want just one person. I wanted both of you all because it was like, man, this dude is a man. It's not just the working, not just, but man, he's there for his woman. He's, she said, prayed over me without ceasing. Both. He washed me in the water in, in, with the word. The Bible talks about how we're washed in the wa- by the water of the word. It's like, man, oh man. Um, can you can you can you speak about your man a little bit? I mean, from the well, he has always loved me mm-hmm. like crazy, loved me. But walking through this, um, I'm just like he's the most selfless human being that I know, and I say that like. He don't, I don't even think he realizes how selfless he is because he's not aware of himself. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, he don't know how selfless he is. But he, um, from the very beginning, like, just walking, I mean, he would, like, okay, um, he took on all of the, like, research, all all the paperwork things, and he's just like, I just want you to heal. So he was like a shield around me. I would wake up and he'd have his hand on my head praying over me in the middle of the night. You know, when I had I had a lot of different um, surgeries and things. And I would have, um, I remember specifically like 
being in the shower and I was in so much pain and um, just like crying because I was exhausted. Like I was just exhausted and I was crying and he came running in there and like just literally like washed me, like bathed me because I couldn't, you know, and, and just the, I was bald. I had completely no hair, bald, been cut through my back all the way to the front and then you know, just drains hanging out of me and just at the end of myself. And he's in there just washing me, telling me how beautiful I am. That's just who he is. That's who he is. And we have right here. How did you help your wife process the times if there were any? And I'm sorry to cut you off, no, but I just good. it says a drastic change from having long just just from here. But she's in in. in uh, She's still in, uh, not just the hair, but just period, how you just loved on her. Yeah. I just was fueled by how much she had loved me through all the years. It's easy. We, we we call it the yin and yang. I don't know if you guys as a married couple, but like when she's in a place where her feet are on, you know, standing on the truth and she's feeling really herself, I feel some room to kind of gripe a little bit and be a little down and just kind of more vulnerable and honest about how I'm feeling. But if I see her struggling, man, it's not even a question. I'm just, I go into shield mode, all in mode, you know? So it was, I mean, it's like, what else would I do is kind of how I see it. And it's like, she's loved me so well. And I'm just so, I admire her more than I admire any other human because I've watched her be the realist in like so many tough situations. You know, it's, there's such a history where I've watched her love me, love our kids, love other people, put herself dead last, do hard stuff, just do hard things and, and be in tough situations and just never stop, never, just zero manipulation, zero complaining, just pure. That's the word I would describe her with, pure. So, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'm going to, this is the moment, one of the moments that, that, where I'm like, who is this lady that I'm married to? Is um, there was one like around August of this year was like probably one of the toughest kind of you know, I guess stints of time, where she was going through full brain radiation and uh, what was supposed to have a potential impact after six or eight sessions like had a drastic impact on her after one session. And she's supposed to have 10 sessions. So the doctors were battling on how to treat that because basically the radiation was making her brain swell. So she was having extreme nausea, vomiting, and headaches. So they were trying to treat that with steroids for the swelling and then still trying to do the radiation. So there was just this tender balance of all that. But she was violently ill for a month straight is the only way I can say it. And... uh and I was still working. I mean, and it was it was just grace, grace. I don't want to overuse that word, but there's this there's this space where you're just walking and you're just being you're being carried, but you're walking. I don't even know how to explain it other than that. But I came in from work one afternoon and Elijah Richie, who he was amazing. Um, Hallie was amazing. The boys, Titus and Ezra, were amazing. I couldn't begin to name the people, but I mean um, I feel like there's a few that are coming to mind that were super clutch, but there were so many that I hesitate to start naming names, but there were, we couldn't have made it without, we literally couldn't have made it without these people, this family surrounding us. Uh, and the way like, our kids spent the night with them for like weeks, you know, mm -hmm. days, the food, mm -hmm. errands. Uh, one, one, one family sent over, like there was probably a thousand dollars worth of Costco just deliver just i mean we didn't have Very to buy strange. toilet paper and, and paper towels and paper plates for two months and mm -hmm. i mean just um and every other little thing notes but but during all that time i come in from work one day and uh and it's right in the middle of she's literally not getting out of the bed at all hardly she's not sleeping so during the day she's trying to rest but i walk into our bedroom and i can hear that she's in the shower and i hear her singing and worshiping and praising and giving thanks in the shower. 
and this is somebody that's not even hardly able to get out of the bed. I'm usually having to walk her to and walk her back. So that was a moment where I just stopped and stood in our bedroom and listened and wept and just asked wow. the Lord, like I gave, I started giving thanks because it's, it's weird. It's weird when you find yourself in these places where nothing like you can't imagine what this would feel like. So you're standing in this moment and you're just like, it's just kind of this awe hits your heart where it's like, this is the reality, but this is the reality. And then the only thing I can do is like, (laughs) just kind of marvel at it, you know? Yes, sir. And so. I'm looking at, oh, let me ask the Lord. I'm going to ask a few more and I'm going to let y'all go. Okay. I'm going to ask just, but. I will say this though. When 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 Pops was at Chattanooga, a month so or whatever ago, and Elijah's words were so um, powerful to me. Yeah. He talked about he said I got a friend who, whose mom has, has dealt with cancer, and we you know, I'm praying we every praying for her as if it was my mother. Um praying for her as if it was somebody praying for your wife as if it was their wife yeah. that level of intensity you know you know people ask you to pray for them and you'll, you'll, you'll be like lord touch their bodies god help them be with them but no i'm like i mean like leaning into that thing mm-hmm. and, and you know you know now you know me and you even black folk you know we pray me when i pray you know so I, I can I, I may be quiet at first but at some t- at some point my voice is gonna raise. Come on, because yeah. I'm serious about this yeah. thing. I mean, I'm, I'm, and so, you know, to pray for somebody with that level of intensity. I mean, what, what do you think about when you hear someone praying for your wife or even praying for you with at that level? Like, I'm praying for you like you, my mama. That wrecked me. Mm-hmm. Like what I heard. Like I, that wrecked me. Um, I love those boys mm-hmm. so much. Mm-hmm. Um, I can't express how much they have loved us and it's like I've known um I I don't even have any words I don't I really don't have words for that like I just how much that means to me but um all I all yeah I don't have words I'm Pass. (laughs) (laughs) Pass. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you can't take things like that with words. It's not I, I just can't. It just, it, yeah. It's incredible. This healed my heart. I will say that. Like the, the love, and I, I mean all the way back from South Carolina, the love from them, the love from this family healed my heart. Because that's what love does. And words don't work sometimes, you know? Yeah. What did you, you, you even dream? What did, what did you think when you, when you heard Hibiki said that she went out running? She had, she had dreams of herself running. And I saw on Facebook where she had went running one. I was like, and I was happy. I was <laughs> and I was happy. What did you think? Did, did she tell you, ba- hey, babe? Hey, today I felt, you know, like running today. Did she even let you know what happened? No, she's so wind-driven that it just happens, and then she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, I ran today. And I'm like, of course. But but it's like, of course you did, you know? Uh-huh. The same thing happened. I mean, South Carolina, like, after the chemo, like, she had this major surgery, and she finished chemo and then had a major surgery. And then it was like, don't, it was like a few weeks later, we hiked an eight-mile hike to the top of a mountain. And then it was wild. That was really pow- empowered by the Holy Spirit for sure. So just that kind of, I remember when she first ran again in South Carolina after all the chemo, but there was not long ago she couldn't walk up the driveway without me mm-hmm. holding on to her or her holding on to my arm. So the fact that she was running again, I mean, it's just um it's, it's believable. I don't even say unbelievable anymore. I just eliminated that from my vocabulary, except for when to say I don't use it anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but it's that's just believable. I came in from work and she's like, I ran today. Wow. And it's just like you just kind of have this pause and you just give thanks and you're just like, Man. <sighs> and then we go to we go to church on Friday night because I, I gotta get y'all out of here. 
we go to church at, 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 on a Friday night, and Pops gives you the microphone, and you give a testimony. Can you share, for those who may had may didn't watch that night or may hadn't seen that, can you talk about, can you, can you share that testimony with us? Yeah, so, you know, like you said, there, you know, in 2020, I was diagnosed and had with stage three, you know, whatever that means, um, oh, breast geez. cancer. And then um, in June of 2023, um, I went in for some pain to the ER. I was having some pain, and I'm not a big ER person, but I was just like, let's just go. Had a scan, and um, they found spots on my brain, my bones, and my lungs. And, um, and so... Fast forward, I guess that was in Jan- the end of January, I had more scans done. Um, this past January. Uh-huh. Yes, ma'am. And they had, it was it was wild. Like, <laughs> the spots in my brain were almost completely disappeared. Like, there was like just a pin dot completely disappeared. My, my, the ones in my lungs were shrinking and the ones in my bones were shrinking. Were they were disappearing. Were almost, there was ones that were gone and there were some, and then the other ones that remained were significantly smaller. There was nothing that was worse. Wow. But the, wow. the, the, go ahead. The doctors in mobile told us this is uncurable. Our goal is to keep this from spreading. Not let they, they were not expecting to see what they saw, but I will say, we went in there and we were like, expect to see a miracle. Yeah. Like, you're going to see a miracle. And they were like, well, I hope so. You know? Yeah. But I was just at MD Anderson in Houston. We went for a, it wasn't really a second opinion as much as it was the doctors in Mobile said we would, you know, just kind of go see what they, clinical trials. Like, what what if they have something maybe that, that we don't have? And so we went in there and that young doctor said, get your affairs in order. And Melissa, through... That smile that y'all have been seeing tonight with tears kind of running out of her eyes said, thank you. She's like, I really appreciate your, your, um. I said, I honor your knowledge. Honor your knowledge. And the time that you have spent doing this. And I honor that. Um, but I have a, what did I say? You said, I said, you said that's not my story. I said, because. Wow. In that moment, it was like, get your affairs in order. Because he was talking about, I know you have children. You need to get your affairs in order. And I said, it's like I could feel Holy Spirit just like, woof, like just protect me mm-hmm. from those curses. Yeah. And I said, I said, mm-hmm. uh, I just started busting out laughing. Yeah, and I just busted out. And I was like, wow. I appreciate you, but that's not how this story goes. That's wow. what I said. Yeah, that's not, that's nice. not how this story goes. I said, the Lord has told me that he's going to heal me, and that's exactly how this is going to go. And he just was like, okay. And on our drive home later, we were listening to some music and silence and driving, and I said, what was this about? Like, like literally a quick trip mm-hmm. all the way over there, and she looked at me and she said, so love could take its place as the highest authority. Wow. Because that fear thing. Because mm-hmm. yeah. we dealt with a lot of doctors over the years, and we have some amazing doctors. So I'm not one of these guys of like, you know, the medical field, bad or whatever. And, but They've been the, amazing, yeah. But at the same time, we were all about some holistic, regenerative, like we uh-huh. we do it all. We'll try it all. And we had amazing people on both sides, and we had some not so amazing people on both sides. But the thing that I found to be common mm-hmm. when you go into a doctor's office, mm-hmm. whether it's intentional or not, and I think that for the most part it's not intentional, is the intimidation and the fear tries to elevate and most people come underneath and into agreement with the opinion of another human because they went to a school and got a degree and they have statistics. I mean, and here's the deal. The treatment plan for my wife's situation was pretty much like, what are the symptoms? What are the tests? And you kind of just track down and go, okay, well, here's the, here's the standard of care. And so, but when most people get those diagnoses, Diagnoses. I don't even know how to say that in the plural. Diagnosis. I. They um. They just. It's so overwhelming. Mm-hmm. There's so much information. Yeah. Yes, sir. And it's presented. In, I'm not saying every doctor, but a lot of doctors present it like this is what you need to do. Mm-hmm. And they do it, mm-hmm. and they do it from a place of fear. Absolutely. And the one thing I watched her do, and I will say, 
Thank you, Jesus, and thank you, Damon, mm -hmm. because of what he, the road that he walked paved a way mm -hmm. for her and the time that him and, and Mama T gave to sit with us and to open up and to share with us about their experience mm -hmm. and what they walked through. It paved a way for us to think differently about this mm -hmm. and to believe differently about the nature of God mm -hmm. and, and who we are and who we are as image bearers and, and, um, and it just it, it it not only framed our approach to the health journey it, it it reframed our approach to the kingdom and it's really all tied back to beloved identity which is where we kind of kind of started this so if i if i've learned anything through any of this is that fear will go as far as you'll let it go but it doesn't have to go anywhere and it has no authority and, to go anywhere. and it it's also it's not just because I feel like there's been like this movement, which I see the beauty of it. Because, but because when I first, I, I was more of a crunchy person, like before all of this ever happened. It was like the toxins and I'd do all the cleanses and the oils and, <laughs> and I love me some essential oils. Okay. I do. But I'm just saying like, I was a part of that world. I did the vitamin C treatments. I did all those things and the supplements <laughs> But the thing of it is, is in both camps, there's it's it's there's fear in both of them. The people over here are afraid of the chemo people and the chemo people are like, these people are idiots, you know, and it's just like, no, no, like, like we're not doing this. And if you live afraid of either one of those, if you come up higher, then you can, because here's the deal. Here's the, come up higher. If come you, on, if every time I went down and I sat down in that chemo chair and I know like that this is like toxic, right? Like yeah, this yeah. is like toxic yeah. stuff. Strong. $62,000 a bag toxic. Yeah. 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 Which is um, but I would sit there and I would give thanks for this chemo mm -hmm. and I would take authority over it. And I would say, you are only allowed to help me, not harm me. Here's the deal. Jesus gave thanks, broke bread. It multiplied. Paul was bit by a viper and didn't even face him. So why are we scared of chemotherapy? It can actually, you know, we have more authority than like that's been given to us and what we're walking in. But I'm just like, and I had no symptoms in chemo. I mean, other than losing my hair, but, mm -hmm. and being a little tired, but I'm just like, thank you, Lord. But you told chemo what to do. You're going to, this is what you're, you're going to do, what you're supposed to do for my life. You're going to heal me. She would pray, you can only touch the cancer cells. You can't touch the good cells. She would send it. She would send, send it. it. <laughs> Let me get y'all home. My God. You know? This don't make no. I have to say this. I've been sitting on this and I, I'm, I'm a talker. And I have been. You hear me? Do you hear me? Paralyzed by the love and the confirmation mm -hmm. in this room, but um, I've dealt with a lot of health challenges, mm -hmm. and they were all rooted in fear, mm -hmm. um, from childhood trauma to you name it, um, multiple fibroids growing and multiplying and taking over my organs. It just it's been crazy. And I can honestly say that Jerry has, oof, yeah. But there's still, since we've been here, God has healed me up so much. Yeah. Um, we were here a few months, and I had a whole hysterectomy. <laughs> and I was, like, up in that church in record time. People were like, you had a hysterectomy? Mm -hmm. Not one of those little cut little incisions and the robot goes in. No, they did the full cut like C-section mm -hmm. and people were just in awe of it, but there was still some little residual things that are still hanging on. I like had this tailbone pain. Even today I've been squirming and mm -hmm. and I'm just sitting over here. I don't know if y'all noticed. I've just been sitting here like where is it? Mm -hmm. Come on. Even Come on. now, mm -hmm. even in this moment, it just and it has it's been it has been rectified greatly. It's gone from like a hundred percent to eighty uh -huh. to ninety to seventy to sixty over the course of the months we've been here. But there's been like a little ten percent that's still and it's almost like, no, you're really not gonna get rid of me. It's fear. Mm -hmm. 
It's fear. And just now, sitting here, I feel nothing. nothing. Come on, man. It's like the joy of the Lord. Yes. Love. Yes. Just kind of. It's yeah. his love, man. It's it just it gets to your system. <laughs> yep. It just moves through you. Yeah. Just, we've experienced so much of this. Yeah. We've been here. And you just, God knows that you have to be with your people to hear those testimonies. No, it wasn't cancer for me. But that that night you stood up and told your report. I was like, I don't even know her. Why am I crying and screaming and jumping so hard? Because we just all felt connected to the truth. The truth. That you are, we are loved. And fear is like fake. It's like made up. And just vanishes when love comes in. It's just so powerful. Yes. And I just knew that this was going to be. And I said, I wasn't going to ugly cry. <laughs> You're beautiful cry. <laughs> yeah. You're so kind. <laughs> but it was just, I just knew tonight was going to set some people free. Mm-hmm. But I didn't know it was going to be. Come on. <laughs> yes. 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 Jesus. Yes. Praying for people. We buried on Uncle Saturday. Cancer everywhere. He was gone within what a month or so a couple i'll be honest with you i was happy when you all said that you would do it yeah and i was like god i was like god if, if my uncle could be free hear this i'm gonna do something man yeah. i just believed to that degree yeah and the reason why i did and and we gonna go this is it this is my last close like like preachers do you know in the black church <laughs> <laughs> this is my last close. Damon do it too, cause you know, cause his sons be on it. You know, daddy, you say you was closing. Yeah. Um, my wife sent me a message from Bill Johnson, and 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 I I don't lean heavy on Bill and I listen to him a lot, but I do, cause the man, he, you know, he on a whole nother plane. Yeah. So I, you know, I got to be in my mind. I got to have my mind all the way together yeah. when I listen. But man, my wife sent me something from Bill, man, and he was talking about how he was saying how that you know people would come to their church and they would see things and yeah. they would hear testimonies but you never saw it duplicated in the moment right in other people's lives and um and he was saying how that um he went to a school and um he the students at the school had there was a little boy with with, with, with club feet and so that's really i guess when his feet is turned over mm-hmm. inside of him and the little boy got healed and at church he began to, he told that story and he began to teach on the concept of the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy. Now, I've heard that for years <laughs> and had no clue or understanding because it was just said, you know, and you know, like, you know, the weapons of our warfare are carnal. Huh? <laughs> and then we just start running and jumping, you know, or, the, you know, all that kind of stuff. But he really took time, he took time to explain it and how that, um, how that the testimony or it should be duplicated basically uh things it should happen again and man he said that he talked he talked about that he taught he told what happened to the little boy he talked about the concept of the testimony of jesus being a spirit of prophecy and he said that there was a woman in the in the in the service whose daughter uh feet was her, her feet were turned in and she was the the, the daughter was in uh the child care while service was going on. And the mother caught faith for what had happened for the little boy because her her daughter was going through that. And by the time she went to go get her daughter from um, after church, her feet were straight. Come on. Then he tells, tells another story where he goes, he went out of country, out of the country. He tells what happened to the little boy. He tells what happens to this little girl. And then he... It, you know, talks about the concept of the testimony of Jesus being the spirit of prophecy. And this other woman who's not even at church, she's watching online. She tells her daughter to come here. Beautiful daughter. Her feet are turned in as well. And she she tells her daughter to come here and start walking to her. And her daughter gets healed. Her, just from the right understanding of the scripture, her daughter, her mom catches faith and the daughter gets healed. And I'm like, God. I believe people can be healed if they hear this these stories. And then, ooh, ooh, not just the story, 
Ooh, could it be that it's not just the story of cancer, but the story of of a marriage being restored? And like, and I don't even, I didn't even know a marriage had been, you know. But wow, the, the power of like, man, somebody hearing me like, man, my my marriage is God's gonna restore my marriage. Yes. I I know how I can see a whole marriage in front of me and how it's supposed to look and be in it. So that's I I, I wanted you all here so that. You know, they could, someone could be healed. Yes. I, I know my wife, Come on. But, you know, <laughs> you know, but outside, I was like, man, if they hear this, they're going to be, people are going to be changed by their lives. Mm-hmm. They're going to be changed by their testimonies. Not just one, by both of you, by both of you all. Yeah. Um, just from pure conversation. Yes, yeah, just pure, pure conversation. conversation. Listen, yeah. you all have, you can connect with Melissa on, um, it's honeybee. Honeybee collective. Honeybee collective. Dot net. Right. right. And then, um, yeah, you can give my Instagram or Facebook or whatever to you. I guess we'll put. We're we'll, hey, we gonna put it on there. We are gonna post it. We are gonna put it in in the description. Y'all link. Catch those those. those she, she just put a new one out. I had. I wanted to ask about rejection in in in, in social circles, guys. I read it. It is really good. So you need to read it. <laughs> Because if you're dealing with a little rejection yeah. and you're trying to figure out what social circle I, hey, <laughs> check that out. All right. Um, not just that. Real quick, though. My man has a new business. Come on. Ha ha. Ha ha. Huh? It's getting hot outside. Yeah. Yes. And if you live in Alabama, whoo, Jesus, you need some relief. Um, so sun, pool, and spa. Can you talk about it? Man, it's just, uh, honestly, on that trip from Houston, uh, it's been in our hearts for years to go back into business for ourselves when the time was right. And um, and I have some really, really, really great friends that we've known for a lot of years, that we've walked with for a lot of years, that build houses in Louisiana, and we've worked with them in the past. Mm-hmm. And we're driving t- back from Houston on that trip, and she looks at me out of nowhere and goes, have you ever thought about starting a pool company? And I said, no, but I knew it was Holy Spirit talking to her about it so she goes you got to pray about that <laughs> so that was in august july august of last year and so i began to pray about it and one thing led to another and reached out to my friend in louisiana who's a general contractor there who builds pools and we just began to do some research and i was um i was sitting one day and i was thinking through things and i was talking to some of my friends here in the homestead family that are businessmen and i kind of got excited and i found myself getting into a, an energy that and holy spirit said he said, I, he, fear of the Lord came into my truck, and I put my phone down, and he goes, we're not going to do it this way this time. Mm-hmm. Wow. And I was like, what do you mean? And he goes, I want you to talk to me about everything, wow. even the name. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, what do you want to name it? And I, and I said, Richardson Pool and Spa. And I said, that's a little much. And he said, how about just son, because you're my son. Wow. Richard's son, son. And then there's this whole thing. So anyway, we started doing the research and uh, have built – uh, a really cool little thing and we've got some projects going on and wonderful we're in the middle of one right now and hoping wonderful. to hoping to just kind of take it slow and take over this this hire a bunch of people put some of these young guys to work hire some mm-hmm. some some ladies that you know just mm-hmm. that just just family be joined it's an honor to be joined to the community mm-hmm. in a way to where you're engaging the municipalities and the and the yes, and, us, and, and being able to hire people and and father and mother a culture from not only from a family but from a business you know and yes, and sir. just uh do things from where the bottom line is not the bottom line mm-hmm. you know what i mean mm-hmm. that's our heart is to really be able to put the trust on display through the way that we do business and the way that we treat people n- mm-hmm. not employees customers subcontractors mm-hmm. com- competition yes sir um Yes, sir. It's just an opportunity, you know, mm-hmm. just like all this stuff is, is an opportunity to trust him more. Yes, sir. That's what it is. Man. And I'm living that right now. Shout out to my boss, man. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Shout him out. Cody and Brittany and Shout Blair. Out. Shout out to y'all. Wise Builders. Wise Builders, man. <laughs> I love, love them so much. Let me tell love you. Love Wise Builders. God is faithful. You don't have encounters at work. And where we come from, <laughs> but we do it. Wise That's Clark. amazing. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Special family. Yes, it is. They are. Well, we thank you all so thank much. Thank y'all so much. Thank you so much. I didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming because He yes. always does. Yeah. 
He's he always does. That's good. I want to thank my man Ja and Michael and hanging in with us, man. You know what I mean? This is a long, yeah. it's a long Tuesday night. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Probably some stuff oh, yeah. they'd rather be doing than hanging out in here with us. You know? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll be at church tomorrow. They'd be all yeah. right. They'd be, they'd be heavy. Be at church. We'll be at church and prayer tomorrow. They'd be good. Yeah. So, yeah. man, we really appreciate you guys. We, for inviting us. we we appreciate y'all so much for blessing our home. Man, this is wonderful. Listen. Thank you all for watching. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. This is it. P-U-R-E.